Well, I wanted a book that would be much more understandable to first-year college students or seminary students in theology who didn't have the background in theological terminology and technical terms. I was writing it for students. I wasn't writing it for other professors. And I think so many times theologians have written with their audience being their fellow theologians in other faculties, in other universities and seminaries. And so they're writing with um, a higher expectation of the knowledge of technical terms and foreign language terms, Greek and Hebrew, Latin, German, French. And those are things that just aren't true of first year theology students in college or seminary. So I was consciously writing for students, not for an audience of other professors. When I give the book to people as a, as a gift, they look at it, it's got so many pages. Uh, I say, don't be intimidated. Uh, just think of it as 57 short books because there are 57 chapters. And if you just want to read the chapter on the Trinity, go ahead and read that or justification or angels or prayer or the deity of Christ or the resurrection. Just read one chapter and see if it isn't understandable. And people again and again have said, you know, I, I, I enjoy reading this. It's, it's easy to understand. I consciously added material on application to life because even the theologically intense books of the New Testament, Romans, Hebrews, Ephesians, they have great theology, but they also include a lot of application to life. And I thought if the Bible doesn't teach theology without application to life, then we shouldn't teach theology without application to life as well. Sometimes in order to save space, previous theology books have not quoted scriptures often, but just listed a bunch of verses. But if I just list Romans 11, 4, 1 Corinthians 7, 2, uh, 1 Thessalonians 3, 5, and Hebrews 2, 7, do you know what those say? Without looking them up. And what that means is that the power of the Word of God is not brought to bear uh, on people's minds and hearts in the way that it is when the actual verses are quoted. Because God's words, I think, are more powerful than more, merely human words. And so I have extensively quoted verses from Scripture to support the doctrines. Uh, so it's really God's Word teaching people, and I think that has had a positive influence on people's spiritual lives. But I think God has given me the ability to write and speak in a way that people can understand. An instinct for when I'm using words that people don't have a conscious uh, knowledge of. Um, partly because I had a father who didn't like me using big words when I could use ordinary words uh, <laughs> to say the same thing. Well, I hope it becomes useful to a, a new generation of Christians. Um, I hope that it's brought up to date in terms of more recent controversies that have come into the church. Uh, all the scripture quotations are changed to e English Standard Version, ESV, uh, whereas they had been RSV, Revised Standard Version. So the scripture quotations, there are thousands of them, are more up-to-date uh, and I think more accurate. And I'm just hoping that God will use it in the lives of many Christians throughout the world to um, increase their understanding of God and His works and His work in our lives and uh, deepen their relationship with Him personally.